Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. I'm a little bit um, white faced. Got a uh, hmm. Hopefully, uh, it will settle in a second. I am um, hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I have. I am going. I have. I have. Honestly. Good morning. Welcome, Christine. get up my app and tell you what it is yes good morning good morning good morning morning pat i don't know why my candle's not showing up it's because the light's coming through on the left morning caroline and chris millie the cat is with us too good morning millie is ronaldo with us Morning, says Christine. I'll just allow a few people to come on. I've got some additions. I've got a very flat pencil to make to uh, the prayer list. I've just... Adding one in that came through by email. Yes, I need a new pencil. Have I got one sticking up? Yes. Uh, that's a bit flat as well. I do with getting my pencil sharpened. Oh, this one works. That'll do. Please don't yet put in prayer requests until I ask for them because as people come on, I lose any requests. Morning, morning, Kate, morning. Ronaldo is still finishing his the night's sleep. I don't blame him. Don't blame him. A nice lie-in can't be bad, can it? So when I ask for our prayer requests, then please do let me have those. Now, where are we? We're only a minute past, so we'll just give it a tinsy, tinsy little bit longer before we begin. And then I will address something that was on the news this morning. But we'll just wait and just in case there's some more people to come on. How did that get so wet? I don't know. Must have knocked my water. I've got a tissue knocking about in here. I've got a tissue roll, that'll do. There. How are we doing, everybody? It's a chilly one this morning. Bit of frost on the grass outside, I can see. Anyone else coming on? I'm sure I had a pencil sharpener there. Never mind. Morning, Diane. Lovely to see you. Right. We are going to get going because it is two minutes past nine. And... Everybody has lives to get on with, don't they? Carol, good morning. Mind you, Bill and Sheila aren't here yet. And, you know, life's not right without Bill and Sheila joining us. Morning, Marlene. I am going to light our candle and we'll just take a moment to uh, collect ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal, in heaven, assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh, may the light of your love be born in us to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. 
Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Right, I'm just going to close up the curtain a little bit. And see if I'm slightly less... Oh, I've still got the light coming through that side. Never mind. I'm half in shadow, half not now, but there we go. So, to address something that was said this morning, the news presenters can't decide whether it's epiphany or not. And I can tell you, it's not. It's epiphany tomorrow. It's the 6th of January that is traditionally epiphany. Although, in the past, the second Sunday of Christmas has also been celebrated as Epiphany. So you can do Epiphany last Sunday, or this coming Sunday, or indeed tomorrow night. Uh, we would, pre-Covid times normally, or I would normally, hold an Epiphany service. But since we are in the middle of you know, um, trying to work out what the best uh, way forward is on keeping and gathering together i think it wise for us not to have extra services at this time unless they are particularly important festivals epiphany is when the magi visited jesus when he was young um, and there is a lot of um, debate over that but uh, I'll let Mark perhaps talk about that tomorrow and I'll skip that dodge that bullet and we will go down to Psalms so our Psalm this morning which is uh, Psalm 48 um, but just to say it is not epiphany it is epiphany tomorrow so if you haven't yet got your Christmas decorations down don't panic you've got until tomorrow night You can, of course, uh, do a vigil in to Epiphany. There are all other sorts of practices uh, and churchmanship styles that would perhaps do that. But we would normally celebrate it on the evening of the 6th. So, there we are. That clears that up. Morning, Mary. We're going to have a look at Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled, and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They arrived like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we heard, so we have seen. In the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her for ever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider her bulwarks pass through her citadels, that they, that you may tell those who come after, that such is our law is our God for ever and ever. It is He that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Good morning, Bill and Sheila. Good morning, Angela. If you'd like to read the Old Testament for yourself, it's Ruth chapter 4, 
beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 17. Ronaldo heard my voice and has just joined us. Thank you, Ronaldo. Good on you, mate. So Ronaldo and Millie are with us this morning and Murphy is curled up because he listens to my voice all the time and, and falls asleep. So, good morning, good morning. Angela, I got your email. My name is Elvin, not 11, by the way. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, do check spell checker when you email me. Otherwise, you will, I will know that you haven't checked to make sure that you are um, spelling things correctly. Right, let's have a look at Colossians. So, as I um, said, if you'd like to read the Old Testament, it's Ruth chapter 4, verses 1 to 17. We're going to Colossians chapter 4, beginning at verse 2 and going right through to the end. Morning, Mary. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray as well that God will open to us a door for the word, that we may declare the mystery of Christ, for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it, as, reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, so that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, the faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They tell, they will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justus, greets you. These are the only ones of the circumcision among my co-workers for the kingdom of God. And they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf. So that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. For I testify for him that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved, where is he? Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you read also the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you complete the task that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Oh, he takes a while to get going, doesn't he, Paul? He is uh, continuing in his opening um, with his letter to Colossa. We have a few names which would have probably been easier to understand and re read out back then than they are now. Um, and they are, in a sense, a... Um, Paul is um, affirming who they are. He is commending them as faithful followers of Christ. 
um, sent by him. So there is, there is this sense that they have had time with Paul. They have had strong teaching and then are commended to be listened to. So there is a sense when we, a lot of people will go, oh, well, Jesus didn't have, uh, Jesus' disciples didn't have um, a, Christ, a, a Christian a teaching, education, theological college, blah, blah, blah. But they sat with Jesus at his feet. And in a sense here, we have those that have followed on, have had time and teaching with those that were, were seen to be the disciples and seen to be faithful followers that already had credentials. Oh, good morning, Mary. Don't worry about being late. So, so Paul is giving the credentials to the next sort of generation following on from him. And so when we when we hear people go on about, oh, uh, we didn't have to have a seal of approval or we didn't have to go, why, you know, the disciples didn't, why do we have to go for a theological education or why do we have to have accreditations in order to preach and to teach the gospel? Well, you don't to one another, but when you are talking to a congregation, you need some kind of credentials to make sure that you are not leading people astray. So we'll read in other letters um, and later on that you know, the people were being taught stuff that was a bit of a pick and mix from previous religions that were not the faith, were not following Jesus's principles. And so here Paul is giving the credentials of names that, of people that are coming back to visit Colossae and, that, and Laodicea and other areas so that they knew that these were the people to listen to and not necessarily others. So it's, it's really important and that's why I went to, to uh, Trinity Theological College for two years, as did Mark as does any priest and our lay ministers and readers Alison, Lisa and Dan would have had a, 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 a um, their training they wouldn't have been full time or part time at Trinity but they would have had a, 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 a set of teaching that gives them the credentials and the ongoing giving of credentials is through myself and through the PCC and others. So uh, lay ministers have to be approved by the minister, uh, myself, and they have to be approved by the PCC in order to have their license renewed on a regular basis. And so there is a sense of credentials and ongoing passing on of teaching. And so here Paul is setting out in this next this part of the letter who it is that the people should be listening to so it's a bit like this morning when you're listening to the tv bbc one news presenters can't decide whether it's epiphany or not well that's because they haven't been approved they don't have the credentials and i can with the credentials i can categorically tell you that epiphany is tomorrow it's the sixth, okay? So there's a, just a brief example of what could be led astray. I was beginning to doubt myself at one point when I was listening to them this morning on the news. Um, and so it's so easy if you listen to the wrong people. And this is why we have theological college, because we don't have the benefit sitting at Jesus' feet like the disciples did. We don't have the benefit of Paul, who has had teaching and instruction from those that came before that were with Jesus. So we are looking at a line of succession, of training, in some way, shape or form, to the point that we get today where we are so far removed from direct contact that we have theological training. Right, that's me on a little bit of a soapbox, perhaps. But I end there. Always test out. If somebody comes to you with um, uh, thoughts on the Bible or whatever, go to books that have been written and look at your sources. It's the same way as we need to look at sources when we look at the science behind the virus and everything else. Check where your sources are coming from. 
if they're coming from the BBC News Channel, you might think that you'd be all right. Clearly, this morning, you wouldn't be if you thought it was going to be epiphany today. So check. Don't always take what you would think of as being the original authority as being correct. You know, they weren't talking first hand. They were talking second hand. They haven't had the training. So go to me. Does that make sense? Right. Morning, Ross. You missed my ramble. But we're going to go now to our responses. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life, which was from the beginning, that which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. So let's move to the Benedictus, the song of Zachariah. To us is born a saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And all the heavenly hosts now sing, glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. To us is born a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And all the heavenly hosts now sing, Glory to God in the highest. Right, here we go. So, just to let you all know, and to pre-warn you, I have uh, taken the decision to begin the prayer list again. So, um... Sometimes um, I get people on here that come on very infrequently and they'll put a request in and the person that they've named goes on to the prayer list, but then they're not on often enough to then take that person off. So just to let you know, I have cleared the prayer list. Yesterday, people let me know of those names that are going to be, that wanted to be re-added I was after Epiphany Service 1964 that started Gordon and my life together. It was after, sorry, pardon me. It was after Epiphany Service in 1964 that started Gordon and my life together. How wonderful, Christine. That's tomorrow. <laughs> Just to confuse everybody. So, Epiphany is tomorrow. Um, but how wonderful to have something to really anchor the basis and the beginning of your relationship on. Wonderful. So now is the time to give me names and I will scribble away with my pen. I'm going to use a pen because clearly my pencils need redoing. I need to make sure I've got a pen that works. So if anybody would like prayer for anybody we need to add them back in i have got addy and william in because i know they both suffer from long-term uh, conditions i have kate mitchell's mum i have ali and i have uh my friends wendy and paul we have daniel we have peter my father we have barry we have christine and we have Angela. 
So, if there is anybody else, please uh, let me know now as we get to this point where we pray in our prayers, where we pray for the needs of the world. So, as I say, please do let me know. And I'll begin to pray and I'll keep my eyes open so that I can see. Please, can we keep Jordan on the prayer list? Yes, of course we can. Oh, just to say that uh, children and young people and our teachers remain because they are a different set. So just to let people know that. So if you've got... Um, if you've put requests in for teachers that you know or children and young people within our church family, that is fine. That is fine. They they aren't going to be taken off because their prayer needs are an ongoing um, spiritual ones, which we pray for. So just so that you know that, just so that we don't get confused, this is for those that are basically on the sick list. <laughs> I know it's probably not PC to call it that, but that's that's the term. It's the sick list, really. Those that are needing healing touch, um, but our children and young people are on the schools and students list, and so they will stay. Okay, does that make sense? So, wonderful, I've got a thumbs up. I've got a solitary, lonely thumbs up there that sort of rose up. I know there's a bit of a delay on it, so just so that we know. All right. Let's move in. Morning, Jamie. Nice to see you on here. Welcome to Morning Prayer. We're just pressing in now to our uh, prayers of intercession in our morning prayer slot. Um, praying for the needs of the world. Just to quickly update you, Jamie, um, our sick list as such is uh, restarting because we're in January. It was getting quite long and I just needed to make sure that people were... Um, on that needed to be on and not ones that have been on and on and on and or perhaps have even passed away you know it's um it's you know like my dad's at life limiting condition if i was only on once or twice you may i may he may have passed away and no one would have known so anyway let's move into prayer for our world loving god we do lift to you the needs of our world and all that is going on Lord, we pray for all those situations which are a result of climate change. We pray for those who are refugees from desert places, from floods. Those who are now homeless as a result of natural disasters brought about by climate change or brought about by our world being a living thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our creator and creator of this world, Lord, we lift to you our planet. Help us to be better stewards of it. Help us as individuals, as countries, as peoples, as governments and those in leadership to be better at it. Help us not to exploit our planet to the point of its collapse. Help us to do all we can, even in small and individual ways, to make this planet a better place for all life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those countries that are divided by war. We pray for safety for innocent lives. We pray for wisdom of those leaders that accords and um, working practices would be agreed so that individual countries can remain autonomous. We pray for all those who live in persecution, those whose civil liberties and human rights are violated. We pray for the protection of those who are imprisoned, for their faith, for their gender, 
for their political views or for their justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all governments and leaders around the world, that they would be just leaders, that your wisdom would descend on their minds and into their hearts, that you would surround them with wise counsellors, that you would remove greed, self-interest self from their minds, so that they would govern and look after their people justly and fairly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray as our schools and colleges return in this new term. We pray for all those who are having to implement new working practices. All those now taking lateral flow tests in order to begin this new term. We pray for the ongoing safety or both uh, mentally and physically for our teachers and those who work in the education system. We pray for Noelle, for Lisa, for Nick, for Gareth, for Susan, for Michael, for Sue, for Joshua, for Chris, for Rebecca, for Asher, Matthew, Sarah, Heather, Marie and Michael. We pray for them for teaching assistants, for those who work as uh, food, lunch providers, dinner ladies, being the traditional term, Lord. Keep them safe, keep them healthy. We thank you for their great courage and dedication to their calling in this work as teachers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do pray for our children and young people, for their mental and physical welfare. For those who are still in the education system, we pray that they would be able to go through this term without interruption. That COVID would not be a problem to their learning. We live to Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Ella, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Mia, Luca, Joden, Ethan, Aidan, Amalia. Lord, as we pray for their mental and physical welfare, we too pray for their spiritual welfare, that they would come to know you as their personal Lord and Saviour, that you would strengthen and grow their faith, that you would protect any um, seeds of faith already planted in their hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we move forward, we pray for all those who we consider to be key workers, refuse collectors, our police force, ambulance drivers, our firefighters, those who work in our shops, those who work in supermarkets, delivery drivers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, all those who go behind the scenes working to keep our economy going. We pray for all these individuals and for them and for their livelihoods. We give thanks that they and many of them have continued to work right through this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for those whose livelihoods are in jeopardy, for those whose businesses or jobs are at risk. We pray for those who are having to isolate and are unable to access financial support. 
We pray that wise and just solutions would be found in order to protect our economy. We pray for those particularly who work in the entertainment and hospitality sector that seem to be so worse hit by all that is going on at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for those who are unwell at this time. Lifting to you, lifting to you Esme, Ali, Linda, Addy and her family, William and his family, my friend Wendy on end of life and her husband Paul, Daniel, Peter, Barry, Christine, Angela and Jordan. Lord, bring healing where it is needed. Guide doctors and nurses and those who care for these loved ones named. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are affected by the coronavirus through illness, isolation or anxiety around our world. We pray that they would find relief and recovery at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time, shaping national policies and making wise de uh, making decisions. We pray that they would be wise decisions based on science, without greed, without self-interest, but with the welfare of our, the people in the UK. We pray for our devolved nations and their leaders that they too would be guided by science, by wise decisions that are there to care for the people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors and nurses around the world and particularly for those in our NHS here and for our local hospitals, knowing that many of them are now at crisis point. We pray for all those whose workloads are hard at this time. We pray for those whose operations that they have been waiting for, for and diagnosis appointments that are now cancelled as a result of the many hospitals being in crisis. And we pray for a, a quick resolution to the difficulties that are ongoing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nursing homes and care homes around the world, around our country, and particularly here in Swindon. We pray for those who are locked down currently because of COVID. We pray for the protection of all the residents and the staff. We pray that there would be enough staff to care for adequately for those who are in as residents and those who are so vulnerable. We pray for those who visit homes that are care workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we too now pray for the vulnerable and fearful, for those who are gravely ill and dying at this time. We pray that they may know your comfort and your peace. We pray for those who are friends and family of those who are so ill or those who are on end of life. We pray that you would surround them with your love and uphold them as they wait. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll collect for today. Almighty God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in this light and dwell 
in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness, into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer. If you would like names added to the prayer list, please just send an email straight to our office and uh, that can then be distributed to myself and Mark. Mark will be with you tomorrow for morning prayer. And so the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Stay safe and stay healthy this chilly day.